Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here with an update on Ian and bad news for Florida. The storm went through rapid intensification overnight. That replacement of the eye wall started to shrink up and really caused the storm uh, to get strong overnight. In fact, you can see it is now just on the borderline of being a Category 5. Not that it matters. Remember, the category is about the wind and one mile per hour isn't changing the impacts from this. It's a high-end Cat 4, which is all you need to know. Catastrophic storm surge and tornado-like winds will be on the immediate coast. This is heading towards um, areas just north of Fort Myers, um, the Port Charlotte area. It is one little interesting thing this morning, after taking these little jogs to the east, it did take a little jog to the left, which is going to keep it over water a little bit longer. So we're probably looking at early afternoon landfall of that eye. I mean, I'm going to turn the radar off just because you could see the satellite imagery. Um, just, just a monster. You could see there's what we call mesovortices in here, little rotations in there. But what this is doing is just absolutely pushing boat loads of water towards the coast. So the storm surge, um, I know the winds get all the play, but the surge is what kills people, folks. Um, that surge in Bonita Springs up to um, areas north of Port Charlotte, maybe even as far north as Sarasota. Um, man, Tampa Bay is just on the border of being impacted heavily. The winds are offshore there right now. So you got to remember the way the winds are flowing around this right now, they're coming from the southwest. So that's pushing the water in. The winds here are actually pushing water offshore. So the surge is slowly moving up the coast as the eye probably going to come in somewhere in here. But again, it's such a big eye, it's going to impact a huge area of the coast. And then from there, the track is going to go off to the northeast. So we'll put the track on real quickly here um, just to show you. I'll, I'll take the spaghetti plots off. Moves across Florida and it's over land, so it will get weaker, but it's still a strong Category 2, maybe 3 storm. Now it reemerges over the water. Everyone's asking, Brad, is it going to get stronger there? It won't. Remember, just because it's briefly over the water doesn't necessarily mean it would get stronger. There's other things going on. This cold front's interacting with it. There's wind shear and dry air. So while, yes, there's warm water there, the other things that help hurricanes form are going to be trying to rip it apart. So it might maintain its strength as a tropical storm here. It's certainly not going to get stronger as it goes across that water. If anything, at the worst, it maintains its strength. But remember, the problem is this is still pushing water here. Um, we get caught up in the strength. Again, those are the winds. Um, the wind strength is not really all that important. It's the duration and the flow of air over water that pushes it against the coast. And because of the shape of the coast there, you've got big time storm surge issues. So real quickly, speaking of that storm surge, I want to show you that water. Um, you could see these areas around the Fort Myers area. I mean, this is that's just huge amounts of water being pushed in there. I'll, I'll quickly show you the inundation. That's the water levels. This is above uh, ground level. Look at some of that storm surge. Um, unfortunately, absolutely horrendous. And again, people focus on the line track. It, the, the worst surge is just to the east and southeast. So big surge coming in there. And then all the way down, thankfully, the Everglades can handle some of that. But these areas, um, that's a lot of water. You look at this. These are populated areas that could have water, especially the Cape Coral area. That's some really serious water moving well into Fort Myers and then up the coast. I mean, tremendous amount of water. And then you see less up towards Tampa. That's why they're getting lucky. Boy, um, just an amazing amount of water there. So let's go back and look at the, the water as it comes north and east. We don't have an updated um, inundation map there, but I'll quickly show you the water levels here as well because there are going to be some big, big surge potential here from Jacksonville up to Savannah and even into Charleston. Again, very low-lying area, so under kind of an underrated little storm surge threat here for, uh, for coastal South Carolina. Even some high water, while I don't expect... A ton of surge, there will be high water, some beach erosion all the way up to the Wilmington area um, and even down towards Myrtle Beach. Now, once it moves inland, this becomes a big rain threat um, as it moves up to the Western Carolinas. The winds will be an issue, but rain is gonna be our concern as well. So let's get right into that. All right, so there you see the center down there. We'll put this into motion, move into the north. So today, not bad, today's the fine day. Tomorrow we start to see the winds pick up, probably gonna see some gusty east-northeast winds starting on Thursday. And again, Thursday night, we could see some showers break out, but I really think you'll wake up to some light rain Friday morning. Um, I think right here, you know, three, four in the morning, we start to see light rain move in. 
The rain just gets heavier as the day goes on Friday. And as we go through Friday afternoon into Saturday, that's when the heavy rain starts to build in. Now, the good news, the flash flood risk will probably not really ramp up until probably Saturday and Sunday because we are so dry. The other thing is the severe weather risk stays down in these areas. So folks in the low country, South Carolina, the Grand Strand, Eastern North Carolina, the coastal plain, that's where the tornado risk is highest. Um, but for us, for the Western Carolinas, this is going to be about flash flooding and some wind. The winds, I do think, will be pretty breezy because remember, high pressure to the north is going to be supplying that northeast wind. Um, when you throw in that and combine it with the fact that we're going to have, you know, this storm coming in from the south and weakening, the pressure gradient between high and low pressure will create a lot of our wind more so than even um, the, the, the hurricane remnants coming up. So let's talk about excessive rainfall because to our south, that rain is going to be coming up. You could see already um, this is the excessive rainfall outlook as we go. I'm going to back this up so you can see a little bit. So this is the excessive rainfall outlook going into Friday. We're already on the edge of that risk area right there. And then we go into Saturday, you can see that risk shifts mainly to the mountains um, with that medium risk. I keep shifting the map. So the medium, that's a 40% chance of flash flooding. And then on uh, Sunday, even have the risk per, uh, continuing for the mountains and the foothills. So what type of uh, act activities are we looking at for big potential there's a storm surge down there to the south here's the potential for 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 rainfall i mean you're talking four to seven inches of rain for the mountains and foothills and again some of these areas around the charlotte area three to five with four to six down here so our number one concern is going to be rain and again i'll move my head here real quickly um the risk is medium right now for most of the area but i think it could go up for the mountains and foothills to the high range four to seven inches Flood threat is high there. Wind threat, I've increased this a little bit because I do think it will be very breezy, maybe gusts to 40, 45. Normally that isn't gonna be a big deal for, um, for, for trees and power lines by themselves, but you throw in the rain on top of it, saturating the soil, so you know how it goes. It doesn't take very long to cause issues. And then the tornado risk, this is the big question mark. Right now it's very low. I don't think any severe weather at all, but if we do see this threat increase down here, um, then we could see you know, that risk move in from the south and east. So that's the potential we'll have to watch because uh, we know the rain is going to be here, but what happens with this uh, warm air and warm front down to the south? Is it enough to pull it back to the northwest? Right now, that doesn't look like to be a big issue. And just to kind of back some of this up with some of the other data, this is the blend of all the guidance, not just one model. We look at everything, blend it all together to kind of give you an average here. And you can see about four inches for Charlotte, four or five inches in hickory but parts of the mountains you're talking five six seven inches of rain maybe even seven or eight in some of those favorite upslope areas winds I, I the reason i'm a little more concerned about winds than i was earlier is that um, we are seeing some signs that we could see um, the winds much higher than we expected especially if the front kind of squeeze plays some of that energy this is the wind gust and again you can see friday afternoon these are the gusts max gust 35 maybe 40 but look what happens um on Saturday morning, let me back this up. Right there, uh, this is Friday night. I'm gonna jump in Friday night into Saturday morning. You see a little surge of wind there with gusts to 40, 45, 50. So that's that's the one area we'll have to watch that potential. And as far as severe weather is concerned, we can look at the the thunderstorm fuel or Cape. This is where it, where we expect it to be. I'm gonna go into motion here. You don't see any of it getting back towards the Charlotte area. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the map here. You can see it's kind of hanging out all near the coast. So that's a good sign for not seeing a lot of severe weather. So that's a look at the system. I mean, it is going to be a mess on Friday into Saturday. If you have weekend plans, plan for rain, plan for wind. Um, hopefully flash flood risk will stay low, but I'll have updates over the next couple of days. Vlogs in the morning, vlogs at night, and frequent updates throughout the day on all of our social media platforms.